and welcome. A while ago, um, some of you may remember, I did a bandsaw circle cutting jig. Well, that jig was made out of a um, an old door from a kitchen unit door, and it's had a lot of alteration over the couple of years that I've had it, and a lot of use. Um, and I scored some rather nice ash um, this morning and I was thinking to myself I really do need to do another circle cutting jig so before I attack the ash tomorrow and prep it and get it ready for, for drying and bold blanks etc um, I'm going to make another jig so I thought I might take you on my journey through making that jig uh, from start to finish and uh, that's what I intend to do today and it's sort of like the circle cutting jig mark two if you like um, I have taken a lot of ideas from um, other wood turners and woodworkers, um, especially Eric Anderson, he put up one a while ago and um, I'm taking a few tips from his build and putting it into mine. So I hope you find that of interest. Um, I'd like to give a couple of shout outs too. Um, one to a good friend of mine called Stephen Tidell. Uh, Steve came over with Rob Summerlin um, a few months ago. Steve hails from originally from uh, the UK, uh, in Luton in the UK, but now living in Ireland. And Rob is an old friend of his, a uh, school, uh, schoolboy friend if you like, and they've remained friends, best friends um, to this very day. And Rob lives in Canada. And they came to my shop and um, we had a great time, great, great pair of lads. Well Steve has taken the plunge and has now got his own YouTube channel. Um, and I'll put a link down below and it promises to be a great journey uh, with Steve uh, following him through his processes, methods and projects that he does. So I'll put a link down below to Steve's channel and uh, go across and subscribe and support him and enjoy his journey through the wood turning craft. Uh, and the other guy I'd like to give a shout out to is Martin Saban Smith yet again. Uh, the main reason for that is this. Hampshire Sheen. Um, I bought this off Martin and it came um, a couple of days ago and I'm hoping to get it on a project in the very very near future and it's his own um, wax and it contains uh, canuba wax, uh, Danish oil and uh, microcrystalline wax and Martin has got um, a couple of projects that he's done with this and I'll put a link to Martin's channel so you can see that uh, but I'm, I can't wait to give it a go and uh, so that's Hampshire Sheen from Martin Saban Smith. So without further ado as I usually say we'll go over to the bandsaw uh, and various other parts of the workshop as I build the circle cutting jig for the bandsaw Mark II. What got here is a piece of 18mm uh, plywood and I've cut it to uh, 23 inches by 22 inches that's 580mm by 560mm. Uh, um, this is the size that I wanted. I can go up to a 16 inch bowl on my lathe, so I just need an 8 inch radius. So this gives me a little bit of an overhang here of about 2 inches um, for me to be able to put um, something there which I'll show you later on to stop it from uh, tilting should it want to do so and also about a two to three inch overhang here uh, when the blade is at the central cutting point uh, to allow me to have an adjustable stop because this blade is a three quarter inch blade not one I'll be using when I'm doing uh, cutting circles or cutting bowl blanks uh, but even if I have a three eighths on there and I have to change it however accurate I think I've put it back onto the tyres it will never be in exactly the same place so you need to do some slight adjusting to make sure that the uh, place where you put your bowl blank is exactly perpendicular to the front cutting point of the teeth which we'll go into as the video progresses so all I've done up to now is cut the basis of the jig and I have run the jig uh, through the blade a couple of times to make it about two and a half times the width of this particular blade to allow a little bit of play and I've taken it, uh, taken it up to approximately halfway. So my measurements and my um, pivot point for the blank will be perpendicular to this area 
here. So that's where we are up to now. Now the next thing to do is to put a couple of runners on the bottom and the way I do that is this. So I've cut some hardwood runners and there's no play at all and they will go on the underside of the jig. Now to raise them above the level of the table I've put in some uh, nuts to raise it above. So there's the runners. Now at this stage I will then put the jig and the idea is the jig will go to there and the runners. What I'm going to do now is to apply some glue to the runners and I'll be using ordinary wood glue tight bond, small amount of glue on here and on the other one and then place the jig table on top and let that dry and then when it's tacky I can turn it over and put in a few small screws to hold it. Okay so that's on there. What I shall do is just leave that for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes just to tack and then as I say I can turn over and put some small screws in. So we'll let that dry and put a bit of weight on there and I'll come back to you for the next stage. Okay so now I'm going to drill um, some holes. I've only, I can only use these very small half inch screws just to secure this on top of the glue that I put on there as well. So I'm going to put four holes. Um, I've got the depth marked there with a bit of masking tape. <laughs> Now with the runners secure, we can test it out, and that's perfect. Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, so that's that part done. On to the next stage. Okay, now so I've got my slider. I've got my blade at uh, 30 degrees, and I'm going to. two 30 degree angles cut there and this slider will then go into dovetail on the board and slide. You draw the outline of the slider. Um, I'm not an engineer, not a flat board worker really uh, and that will match that with a bit of playing around and I shall do the slot and then this will slide in and out of that. Now I won't bore you with me doing this as you can see from here now I've done the two 30 degree cuts and I will now go back and forth multiple passes to remove the wood in the middle and we'll see how the slider fits once we've done that. A slight mishap. Uh, what happened was yesterday when I left the uh, first half of the, of the video um, you were looking at the uh, start of the dovetail recess that goes through the width of the board and I was going to complete that and carry on which I duly did. Well I edited up to there and then came out and filmed the remainder of the video with the various things I was doing to achieve the final result. So I took in the camera to download it to the computer and edit it and as I took the SD card out of the camera and put it into the card reader it snapped and there was no way of recovering the information on there. So, yesterday was Sunday, today is Monday, I had to wait until today to get another SD card, so anyway that's up and running now. So what I intend to do is to go through the methods I used to achieve the final result and obviously put it through its paces on the bandsaw. So apologies for that uh, and I'll try and be as thorough as I can on the last little bit of building. So we'll go back over to the jig and I'll take you through it.
Well, I have the jig on my table saw because it's easier for this part of uh, what I want to tell you. So I cut a channel on the table saw at 30, I put my blade at 30 degrees and ran a channel along the width of the jig. This is just a piece of infill which I've happened to paint black because I could for no reason just to fill in the channel that went down to here. Then I've got my slider and I've put an 8mm dowel, drilled a hole through and put an 8mm dowel in there and just got some reference lines off the centre of the, of the hole I drilled. That will become apparent in a minute. And the reason I went for 8mm is that 8mm is the size of my worm screw. So I have, all I have to do is when I get the blank I drill the hole with an 8mm drill bit. That then will enable me to A, cut the blank into a circle and also to mount it onto the lathe all in one, with one drilling operation. And then what I've done here is that obviously uh, the dovetail is reversed on here so that it slides in and captures the slider. Um, I did have to, in honesty, use a uh, chisel and a little bit of um, chisel work just to get this to fit nicely, but it was rather tight. Well, I'd rather it start off tight and get it to fit as, as, as snugly as you can. And that slides up and down. And then by means of this uh, little screw here, you can stop it uh, at whatever distance you want. And that just pinches, no, nothing major, just pinches it just to stop it moving. And I'll go to the underside now and show you what I've done. And then we'll put it onto the bandsaw and show you it working. These are the runners, obviously, which you saw. What I've done here is just used a 6mm threaded insert um, and just drill the hole, put the insert in and just cut a... Um, an M6 flat edged uh, bolt there and that will do the pinching on the slider. Here is the cleat um, and that, that idea was got from um, Eric Anderson, the naked turner. I mean he used metal pin. I've just put uh, two pieces of plywood and that hooks under the bandsaw table to stop it tilting and here is the adjustable slider um, just a couple of um, wing nuts and a couple of washers and that slides back and forth and that allows me to align the the, uh, the centre of the dowel in the slider exactly to the right position on the bandsaw and I'll show you that later and again what I use there I just cut a slot there nothing fancy I just drilled it out and then filed it a little bit two slots and again Uh, two M6 carriage bolts in there, countersunk to go beneath the, the surface and um, again two M6 threaded inserts in there and then these are, those are screwed down nice and tightly so they do that job very well indeed. So we'll go over to the bandsaw now and I'll show you how I set it up and we'll cut a small so here bolt we are with the, uh, the jig on the bandsaw and as you can see, the cleat stops it from going uh, from what it to tip over, which would happen when you've got a bigger blank on here to start with, because you start out here. So that gives some security to there. Now, if you remember, when I did the first bit of the video, I had my three-quarter inch blade in. I've obviously since changed it to my three-eighths, four TPI, which I tend to prefer for doing uh, circles. And as you can see, it's not set up properly. So, the marks on here, there's one there at the middle, and there's one on the side, and that's for the measurements. So I, what I have to do is to line that with the front edge of the tooth, just there. And if you don't do that, then you won't get a good circle. This is where the adjustable uh, stop comes into play and I merely put that up against the table 
fold it and do up the wing nuts and they know we're set. It will stop it in just the right place. Okay, so I've just got a bit of scrap here. I've drilled an 8mm hole. The hardest bit always is to get it on the on the dowel. I've cheated here, I've got a little mark on there which gives me some idea. There he goes. Now this is where you can really get the most out of your bit of wood because you can finely tune it to the, uh, the, the kerf, the cut line. And just move it a little bit to say there. Okay, so now I can tighten down the screw and that holds it in place. And then we'll turn the bandsaw on, move the jig forward until the stop registers and then we can turn the circle. And there is your perfect circle. I think a little modification I might make actually is to uh, get a force and bit and drill a hole there, maybe, I don't know, an inch, to take the, um, the sawdust away. But, I mean, it's not a big problem, but it's something I think... I hope you find that interesting. Um, I'm very pleased with the way the jig turned out. It's very flexible, very versatile, and it works a treat as f for my uses. Um, and thanks very much to the people who have put uh, videos up on YouTube from which I got quite a few ideas from. Uh, notwithstanding Eric Anderson of course who gave me the idea with the with the cleat which is brilliant. Stops it tipping over. The adjustable uh, backstop is brilliant as well because it means when you put different blades on you can get it exactly as you want it. So I hope you found it of interest um, and thank you very much for watching. Apologies for the lack of continuity but we all do stupid things and I do more than most I think. Well, thanks again for watching. As I say, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Cheers now.